welcome back to episode two of Watch the World with Jess. And I'm here with a special guest, Mr. Rob, the director and CEO of Heritage International Schools. We are making sure our priorities will make our school even more outstanding as we aim to be one of the best schools in Europe. How are you, Mr. Rob? How are you Hello, doing? Jess. Um, well, the sun is coming through this window here where we're talking. I can see the park over at the UTM campus and the trees look as if they're ready for spring. So we're feeling finally out of this long wind, winter almost. Okay. So all the way from UK to Moldova, what made you Ah, uh, the journey, the journey to Moldova. I, I think it might have been pre-ordained and destiny because I've always worked with Eastern Europe for most of my career with countries like Poland and um, the Soviet Union as it was, or Russia and, 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 and Siberia. And I've worked with lots of um, great educators from Moldova over the years. And when the opportunity came and Heritage was looking for a director just to kind of get it more established and, and using my experience in international education to really develop the first international school in this country on the model we've set up, it, it was just too good not to come over here as well. Sometimes I think we need to sail a little bit away from the coastline into slightly unnavigable waters and uncharted territory and sometimes we need to do that in our lives, even at my age. I'm going to pretend I'm not a student here. I want to ask you, in the UK, where you were also a director. I was. I was principal of a, a very wonderful school community Wydean School on the Welsh and the English borders. Um, it's got a claim to fame because uh, it was the school that J.K. Rowling, the author of the Harry Potter series and Fantastic Beasts, she was a student there for a long time. She based a lot of the characters on people that she knew, as writers often do. And uh, the area is very beautiful. It's the Forest of Dean, it's the Welsh borders, it's the Wye Valley. So um, I, I had four wonderful years in that community and, and we did a lot of good things as well. I was very privileged, although it doesn't look like Hogwarts as a campus, um, I did actually have Dumbledore's office, which um, had been the first head teacher, Ken Smith, and uh, JK, Joanna Rowling had, had based the character on the first head teacher. And um, Snape, the famous character, was a science teacher, was actually a man called John Nettleship. Uh, her mother had been a science technician in the school, so there were some lovely connections there. What do you like to do in your free time? I know you love to write. I, I do like to write, and uh, I, I, I do lots of writing, and I keep my blog mail from Moldova, but my experience is here, which I think is up to about 150,000 words, so I, I don't know, a bit like the Truman Show, where it will end, um, but I, I've just, uh, I publish that each month do various articles for education magazines and uh, last few weekends we've been involved with training teachers and school leaders here on a Saturday because we're looking at things like leadership development and getting the model away from leaders that are kind of all powerful and at the top of the tree and om omnipotent and actually distributing leadership and getting leaders developed all across the school and in students and teachers. We did something on artificial intelligence and, and chat um, GPT, which was an incredible session. And again, working with our national education community and having all these teachers from Moldova come and visit. For myself, if I'm not working and I'm not sort of talking to my children and wife at home, um, we do a lot of work with, as you know, the animal shelter here, here in Moldova, Ariel Fonds, helping support the dogs and the cats and the animal welfare approach. I love the countryside. I always love to go and think and have a walk. And there are lots and lots of brilliant forests around um, up in the, the Codru and, and near Old Orhe. And I sometimes spend a lot of time there. And you've got wonderful lakes and even the winter, especially in the winter, it's very good. I, I, I read a wonderful article in New Yorker recently how important it was for a good walk to clear your mind and just to sort of change the scenery. And even where I live in the centre of the city, um, Stefan Chalmare Park is uh, is great to have a walk around. Some wonderful areas of that park, like the Writers Avenue, and a good cup of coffee. Not unplugging that particular cafe, but Bonjour Cafe in the middle of it is always very good for a cup of coffee, and they've got a nice display there. So, Moldova is wonderful food. I mean, the choice of restaurants and cafes, and the pride that people take here in good cuisine. I mean, my goodness, you're spoiled for for many. It holds its own with any European capital. I feel. Um, and of course, not that I drink wine all the time, but we know there's some <laughs> wonderful wine in this country um, and lots of good things to see. 
What's your favorite food? What's your favorite Moldovan food? Oh, I'm going to be very controversial here and I apologize. <laughs> I'm not a, the biggest fan of Mamalega, so I apologize. But if someone told me they didn't oh, like really? fish, and, fish and chips, I wouldn't be offended <laughs> by either. Um, I think there's so many, I mean, my goodness, I've had good Zama. I've been to lots of people's houses, good colleagues' houses and their family, and I've had really nice, good home cuisine, home cooking. So I've had nice mamaliga, um, samala, um, kushmant, gugutsa, the wonderful cake oh, of, really of, of uh, lovely brinzoitsha, and um, there's so many lovely foods. But you know what? You can go into a local cafe and a sandwich shop and have a nice sandwich and a coffee <laughs> and not pay a fortune for it like you would in London. Um, I, I, I've eaten some really good Italian restaurants here. That sounds, um, we'll talk about local cuisine, but uh, there's, there's a lot of Moldovans who've been, lived in Italy and they've brought back great pizzerias and lovely pasta food. A seafood place near me on Emanescu Street. And I like mussels and, and red, white wine and because my <laughs> wife's father had a restaurant in France. And it's very good. I mean, again, Moldova does really good food. And you're, it's good quality and it's good, good, good value for money as well. So You guys should come to Moldova too. Try Absolutely. We need more people to come here and see it. And yeah. um, it's Europe's least visited country. And I like the authenticity of the experience. Kishna is a very green city. I, I've been speaking to some teachers we're hiring for next year from the States. We've been talking about Cold War legacy and Cold War history. And there's actually some really wonderful walks in this city. I know there's a guy that's recorded those wonderful mosaic kind of bus stops that are around the country that they're just fascinating and I, I love this kind of quirkiness of it all, but there's certainly there's something for everybody. Not that I'm, I'm a bit too old now for nightlife, but I know many, many good bars and, and clubs and, and there's a nice vibe to this city and it's a very easy, relaxed city to get around and be in and, and lots of green parks. Where we are in Botanica, um, the wonderful old wooden church we have here with a park or the zoo and um, People are very surprised. I talk to a lot of internationals when they're coming here with their families to work with the international organizations like the UN or in embassies, and they're very surprised. Very strong family feel to it as well, which is very good. How do you feel at Heritage specifically? And what's the highlight of your days at Heritage? The highlight of my day for students. I mean, anybody in education, if you work in education, it's kind of central and fundamental, you believe in children and young people. So for me, the highlight isn't lots and lots of meetings and dealing with the stress of angry teachers or parents, but it's actually being at the front of school each day, greeting everybody, seeing everybody's faces, starting a new day. I know that sounds a little bit syrupy, but that's how it is. It, it's, it's a great community. You know, over 25 nationalities come through the door every day. Such an eclectic range of stories in this school. It's like no other school. I've been working in international education for a lot longer than most people think, and from 30 years, and I've never really found such a community as precious as this one. And it's a real privilege. So for me, my day is working with young people and no school leader or any leader of any organization needs to lock themselves away from, from the shop floor or from the halls and the corridors. So that, that's that. And we always look forward to seeing you and giving you If I'm not hiding away, it's <laughs> stuck with paperwork, which is yeah. also my own job. Here's my question before we end off if you had a chance to say something nice to those back home what nice thing would you say about Moldova <laughs> um, what would you recommend I have to say that this year and the last few months I've seen the very best of Moldova there's an airport sign at the Kishno airport that says the best of Moldova <laughs> the small country with a big heart I think anybody who knows Moldova and sees the remarkable people, how hard working they are. Um, you look at the diaspora, you look at the people that work abroad and gain all those skills. You look at the wisdom and leadership of lots of good people in this country in, in, in key positions uh, without making a political point, um, but admiring as somebody who's worked hard and has shown the value the very president in her education, in her leadership as a woman who's admired in Europe, I think is a good role, not to agree with the politics necessarily or to watch the decisions, but actually just looking at her as a role model and figure in the country. The founders that I work for in this school, brilliant people who invest and believe in, in, in this country, the parents I work with here, the, the students, the families, the teachers. So there's so many good things. As an ambassador, for one of the European Union countries, when I first arrived here, he said to me in my, one of my first meetings that this country is the hidden jewel of Europe. 
And I still believe that. And I think it's a wonderful, wonderful place to discover and have a, an authentic experience with. And I know that all the international teachers that come here, uh, they all have takeaways. Some of them, it's not for them, it's that they're wanting something more bright and brash, and maybe Prague or the Middle East. Or but for, for many, Dover is that hidden jewel. And I would say the country, the, the small country with the big heart and the hidden jewel of Europe. The hidden jewel of Europe. Wow, I'm going to stick by that. Great, great title for you. For your, for your podcast as well. Thank you so much, Mr. Thank, Rob. Thank you, Jess. Good okay. luck with the rest of the series, okay? Thank you. Thank you so Thank much everyone. for accepting this invite, and I hope to hear more from you. Most <laughs> mess. Spasiba. Jokinvar. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Oh, your Romanian is very good. <laughs>